Hi guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So this one has certainly been a long time coming, hasn't it? Um, I've been trying to grind up these Keshigs for quite a while now and it's been taking me a while to get some sort of decent footage on them but I also wanted to spend quite a long time playing them and sort of getting the hang of them properly or at least as best as I can because they're quite a controversial unit because they're quite a meta unit I think. Are sort of one of those units that people seem to either love them or hate them. Either hate them for uh, a sort of feeling of being overpowered or too strong, etc. And others uh, think they're not and really love using them. So there's kind of a bit of controversy around whether they should be nerfed or not, etc, etc. And kind of we're going to cover that a little bit today. So kind of why is there such a divide? I think part of the problem is twofold. I think firstly you have to consider that Keshigs have extremely high damage both in their walkthrough and in their charge, and particularly on their return charge, where they get that plus 30% charge bonus. Um, and that makes them very damaging. However, they are also the easiest cavalry to stop. I mean, they get stopped by absolutely everything, from crossbows, muskets, pike militia, uh, imperial pike guard, spear sergeants, stalwarts, pretty much everything um, that has a brace or any sort of cav damage will stop these guys. Um, in a way that, you know, for example, Spear Sergeants and Stalwarts don't stop a Monastic Charge. A Pike Militia doesn't stop a Monastic Charge. So these guys are a lot more fragile in that sense. And their hit points, as we can see, are good. But their defensive stats are really quite poor. And they feel very fragile. And I think their soft defensive stats are actually worse than it kind of uh, uh, gives in this sense. If you think a, a Monastic Knight is probably more tanky than the uh, stats here really give the impression of. And these guys are actually kind of less tanky than to give the impression of so they are a bit of a glass cannon so why is it then that they're so popular and what makes them so good well i think there's a few elements to that part of it is the speed and the damage but another element i think that isn't often considered is the grind to unlock them so to actually get access to these guys you'd have to and if you were joining the game now you'd have to go to your unit challenge you'd have to go back to season two You'd have to get through the first two of these. You then have to get through one of these to even get onto these. And then there are just stacks upon stacks upon stacks of challenges you need to complete to actually unlock the Keshigs at the at the the end. There's what the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sets of challenges, and that is a lot. It basically means that new players are unable to get these, and you either have to have been playing for a long time. Or you have to play for a long time from now on going forwards to get them. Because realistically, this is not going to be your day one focus. So why am I going on about this? The point is, in a nutshell, Eshigs are only owned and played by experienced players. If you take a unit like Monastic Knights, for example, um, then they're fairly easy to unlock. You know, the honor cost, okay, it's still fairly high, but much more realistic to get down here hell it's even much more realistic to unlock things like uh wing tassars and fire lancers now these are units that are owned by much newer players or much lower level players i mean now with the hero's journey you can actually get a free tier 5 unit so we're seeing a lot more uh, of these sort of tech tree cavalry uh, available for newer players and so in a way that is dampening down the win rate or the success rate of Hazars, Monastics, Cataphracts, Fire Lancers, etc. Because you don't know who's going to be controlling them on the battlefield. So it doesn't feel so bad when you face off against them. That Keshig player is almost certainly been playing for at least six months. He's going to have at least a reasonable idea of what they're doing with the unit. And so he's always going to be controlling them relatively well. And that sort of negates, in my opinion, uh, 
the disadvantage of kind of how fragile the unit is. Because the unit is pretty easy to get killed with. You can have absolutely great games, but I have as many games where I just completely screw it up, you know, miss my charge, charge into something that stops me, get 15 kills and die. I mean, I'm not a great player. I'm not one of those exceptional players who can really do well with this unit, but I've certainly been playing long enough to know how it works and I've got the experience. So I think that comes into a lot of it. And I think that is as much the problem with Keshi's as it is actually the unit itself. Of course, I think it's also made worse by the fact that they just have this extremely high damage. And so that when you do get those exceptional players who use them a lot, they can really um, target their charges a lot better than I can. They can really sort of take advantage of that. So then that kind of leads on to my second point with the unit itself. And that is kind of the playstyle. I think it's certainly a unit that exacerbates the case that different players will end up having different playstyles. So I think Conqueror's Blade is a game where, um, how to put this, there are some very good players who have very fixed playstyles and they tell everyone else they should have a very fixed playstyle. This is how you should play your class. This is how you should play your unit and there is no alternative. This is the one and only way. And that might work very well for them. And if you're an exceptional player, that probably is the best way to do it. But I'm not. I'm not an exceptional player. So some of the things that they might play or somehow they might play the unit doesn't work for me because I can't pull it off in the same way. And I think that's going to be true for a lot of you as well as, as the sort of communities, middle of the road, maybe slightly above average players. I think we all have to play sometimes slightly differently to how we are told by the uh, very high level players. So I've kind of been trying to develop my own play style a little bit with these guys. And I think sometimes it differs slightly from the way some of the more experienced guys do it. But that was a very long, detoury, philosophical way of saying that I sometimes find the unit quite hard. And while I sometimes have some amazing games with it, I find it a bit of a mixed bag. And I think you kind of have to try and adjust to get used to it. That out the way, um, unit kit wise, obviously it's fairly expensive. 9,300 uh, for kit. Obviously, I've got some of the horses in stock. Otherwise, it'd be 15,000 for the horse as well. Doctrine wise... Uh, obviously the one you really need is the movement speed doctrine is that's what makes them super super fast and that's kind of what it's all about with these guys i've then thrown on the the slashing damage slashing increase because that seems to be the bulk of the damage they do um piercing defense just to try and nudge that nudge that up a bit you actually look their piercing defense is their weakest stat their slashing is quite a lot disproportionately higher that's why i kind of threw on the piercing and that breakthrough doctrine just to increase damage to units if it just because it wasn't quite high enough already <laughs> Um, veterancy line, I've gone been going down the top line. A few reasons, largely the, the cooldown, to be honest, is what I really like. Trying to get that charge cooldown, I think, to around 40 seconds is really important. But on top of that, you're getting the extra damage here. But you're also getting, wherever it is, there's one somewhere, the increased charge damage by 21% here. And there's also that extra damage to infantry by 15% as well, which is great. Damage dealt using melee attacks, which means that your your walkthrough damage just by sort of Xing the unit through the enemy formation is phenomenal. That's what really one of the things that makes this unit great. And because it's a level 30 unit, obviously you get a little bit of extra slashing and piercing defense along the bottom row as well. But anyway, I definitely waffled on for long enough. So let's hop into some battles and see how we get on with the Keshiks. So kind of as I was saying in the intro, I have actually found at times the Keshiks quite hard to use well and i think that's definitely reflective of not being me being an amazing cav player but it is also quite a hard unit to use but broadly i seem to have split them up or my thought process with them into two broad categories i think there's games where you're just trying to get kills and that's hero and unit kills you're just going for the maximum number of kills you can sometimes in a charge sometimes in just walking through units um and other times i think you're trying to make tactical plays clear out a certain passageway, hold up a certain number of enemies, block a point so your team can cap an area, that sort of thing. I mean, in this case, in the first clip, I think we're pretty much just a, just a focusing on kills game. We've captured the A point. The B point is pretty much guaranteed to fall on this one because once the A point's gone, it's quite hard to hold the B point on this map. I was thinking about trying to get a charge down that back street, but I just noticed at the corner of my eye that they just placed a treb there, which is a bit unfortunate because it kind of blocks me. So I delayed a little while, and I'm just waiting for the turn to come about. But this is exactly where the Keshigs excel perfectly. You know, <laughs> I mean, 
what can the enemy do in that sort of situation? The amount of damage is insane. Just got 9 and 100 kills in one charge. Of course, they come back and they buff up, buff up the kills even more on the return. And even as I'm leaving, not with a charge, we get another hero kill and pretty much wipe out a unit of Iron Reapers. So there's very little the enemy can do in that situation. Arguably, I guess they should have been uh, more aware and put a unit back facing backwards. They could have, should have seen me coming. I would have appeared on their minimap because you know, I've seen by other players. But I was able to just get into an intense amount of damage in a very short period of time, get out and get back to the supply point. And it's this sort of situation, this sort of games where the Keshigs are truly a dominant unit. And that's what makes them such a current on-trend meta unit at the moment. But we can also use them more tactically. And sometimes I find that. For example, on Coet Castle now. And we're actually having a really hard time capturing the A point. We're taking a lot of unit losses. And we're not really getting anywhere. And it is very easy to lose this map without taking anything. We know the B point is close to being capped. Teamed up with my teammate, double team of Keshigs. Let's just go and try and get the B point. I'm not interested in the unit kills now. We're actually trying to take the point, to try and save this game. As we get here, we see the enemy spawn to try and intercept us. I just go for a clutch charge. It's not about the kills, even charge the Forte Brachios. Thankfully, the Forte Brachios don't brace in time, which means we're able to get in, we get the hero kill. And actually, we're able to defeat that pike unit really quite easily. Had the Forte Brachios Brachio braced, that would have been the end of that. But we got away with it, only two losses. Full unit of Forte Brachios and um, those Prefecture Guards are dead. So we're just trying to finish off this Longsword, which the unit does fairly easily. And that has basically secured us the cap point now, which is exactly what we want to be doing. Because with the B cap, that means the pressure can really start to apply on A. And it's going to be much easier to get onto the next phases of the battle. They actually end up spawning with Stalwart, so for me, I decided to make a run for it. Didn't want to stick around for that one. But as we do, nice unit of archers here, which didn't seem to be protected by enemy hero, any enemy hero. So I just go and walk over into them. I could have used my charge, but there's no real benefit in this situation. I'd rather save it in case I sort of need it for a clutch escape or something like that. Uh, although the unit is all now so badly damaged, we are starting to take casualties as we get out. And I should definitely have just gone for the gateway here to try and get out. But unfortunately I didn't. I hesitated slightly and that meant I lost a few more. So already by this point, I'm kind of now down to like half a unit as I go and throw them back on the supply point to get healed up. Then a few minutes later in the same battle, they're healed up and coming back in. And I think once I don't have a specific objective or plan in mind, I think this is where I start to sort of slightly lose my focus and go a little bit wrong. We end up coming through these Imperials here, which from the front we don't actually do very much damage. But thankfully I'd put them on quite a short charge and they do return. And on the return they hit pretty hard, you know, we see we're hitting crits for sort of 6k, something like that there. And we're able to ripe out this full unit of Imperials without any actually unit losses. Which is nice considering we were only an 8 stack. We had a full stack of Keshigs there, then you know those improvements would have been absolutely slaughtered. Take the time to get healed up a little bit here on this um, point, trying to get the unit back up to strength. Although, unfortunately, I think we're about to get stuck getting plinked by an enemy bow hero, which basically reduces our healing progress back down to where we started. But with that, I'm then back off trying to look for my next target. And this is where, uh, yeah, I often find I go wrong. I'm not really sure where I want to go or quite what I'm trying to achieve now. I'm just sort of really looking for opportunities and if there's one thing we've learned from <laughs> a lot of my previous videos i'm a king of hesitation and sort of not really committing properly i see a few jav sergeants here didn't notice the musket till the last minute try and get my charge off just doesn't go very neatly round the corner and then we immediately get stunned and grenade which kind of means i get caught out and i get myself killed really quite quickly with that there's not a lot left for the unit to do. They're caught in the middle of those Jav Sergeants. They do a little more damage to get a couple of more kills, but that really spells their end. And that spends the end of that game. But all in all, we still got way over 100 kills with the Keshigs. And we did capture the B point, which is what I'm in when I say they can be a real tactical unit. So with that, I've got two last clips that I want to show you. This one is kind of... The point I think I learned from this one is that sometimes simplicity is fine. You don't have to do anything fancy with them other than just look for something to kill that isn't a pike unit and just walk into it and a lot of the time that just really actually works quite well they do a tremendous amount of damage in melee so you don't have to be all that great to to really make use of them in a lot of situations so there's a lot of fighting going on at the a and the b point and i can just see from the gateway there's just loads of archers stood out here with nothing really standing around them i mean spot a luck that as i walk down here this second unit just set up right next to me 
we're just able to walk at us two full stack, full stack of Nam and a full pack of, uh, was that Imperials? I'll have to go back and have a look. Possibly Imperials. And yeah, we were just able to walk through them. Both sets dead. Took a little bit of damage. Um, a few few unit losses, four units dead from from the actual just the archer fire. But you know, the amount of walking into a unit of Nam Kans, you're about to be taking bleed damage. But yeah, two full stack of archers killed. And nothing special. I didn't even use my charge. And we can now put the unit back, get them back on the supply point, get them healing up, and maybe have a look to try and do that again. Fortunately, we are capping a bit of cap on the B point, but it gives me the opportunity to kind of have a look for him. I thought he was going to go on supply, so I quickly set my unit on attack, because I thought, hang on, don't go and attack my Keshigs while they're healing. But he actually wasn't. I think he was just trying to get out of there, and he just happened to be going past them. So unfortunately, we don't manage to catch him. But it does mean we stop the cap on the B point. Quick hey to someone in chat, and we're back off trying to find our next targets. Kind of looking what's going on. Only two minutes left on this match, so it starts to make me, I guess, increasingly aggressive, because I feel like, well, I've not got too much to lose at this point. Let's see what we can catch. Let's try and be aggressive, see if we can find something to kill. Having a bit of a look around, see if there's anyone sort of looking to come off the walls, but didn't really seem to be too much target-wise, so I'm starting to think, well, maybe we should go and have another look, see if there's sort of any more archers set up outside. Initially, can't really see anything. I'm sort of thinking, ah, is it worth going out or is someone likely to be coming off the walls? I had a quick look on a tactical overview. Looks like some war rockets going in on the top walls up there. A little bit chaotic. But didn't really seem to be anything there, so I'm thinking, well, let's go back outside and see what we can find. Certainly want to be avoiding those stalwarts, unless they're going to not going to brace. But we do run into a nice unit of longbows, which, yeah, die almost instantly. <laughs> You know, that's a heroic era of 250 leadership units, so it's an expensive unit to, to deal with. We then get these Iron Reapers. Definitely now is the time to use the charge, and that's why I like to walk through things like the, uh, the Longbows, because you don't need to use the charge on the Longbows, they'll kill the Longbows just in the one. But things like those are Iron Reapers. It's nice to have a charge to, to basically one-hit a unit of Iron Reapers. I should know that's another Golden Era unit. That's someone's uh, quite a chunk of their leadership pool eliminated. And there are Iron Reapers that would have been going up to pressure the A point. So in that sort of situation, that's why I think sometimes just holding on to your charge and just walking through light units is absolutely fine. It seems to kind of be the way to go. So with that, I sort of pulled back in thinking, oh, maybe I should go and heal up, play it a bit more carefully. But then I thought, oh, you know, sod it, there's 17 seconds left. What, what have we got to lose? Might as well go and find something else to kill. And just because we haven't quite had enough archers yet this game, we just managed to clutch these guys as they got the ladder. I did, I did feel a bit bad at this point. I, it's, it's a, I've butchered so many archers in this game. And finally, I mean, if we had had more pub time with the charge, we would have easily probably been able to wipe out that unit of paladins as well. The unit is so dominant in the open space and the open ground like this. And for my final clip, I just wanted to touch on this one because it was kind of an interesting one where um, it's kind of what you can do, or at least how you can get away with a little bit of micro to try and avoid some of these situations. So initially we get in, we're having fun charging around, just killing people around on the supply point, and then I sort of got myself into a bit of a bad situation. First, we get hit by these fire lancers coming in. Okay, quite a tough enemy cavalry to deal with. I really want to be healing up now. The unit's getting pretty low all round. I've still got 15 of the unit. I'm ready to heal now. And then we've got stalwarts to the right, so I think, oh, let's go left. Oh, we can't. There's an enemy shield unit. Now I'm in trouble. But we're able to sort of squeeze around the outside of the fact and start to come back through on the backside and push straight through the rear of an enemy unit of stalwarts. And, uh, okay, we are starting to take unit losses here now. Still trying to heal up, still trying to get in. And we get another unit of enemy stalwarts, so I have to push myself right up to the far rank, far rank ascent again, and come back around the back. Okay, thankfully we had those friendly flames there, but the same principle applies. And, yeah, it kind of shows how a little bit you can sometimes get away with some situations with a little bit of, sort of tight micro in some of these um, slightly tighter situations where there's quite a lot of enemy units that are going to be dangerous to you as a, uh, a cavalry. You can sort of get away with it, at least in part, even if you're not going to be getting that much kills and some of your units are going to die. At least it's better than just sort of facing a stale stalwart head on or something like that. But anyway, that's been kind of my experience with Kashyyyk's over the last couple of weeks. Certainly an interesting unit, certainly extremely powerful when it works in the right situation and the damage is absolutely insane. I don't think they're a unit I'm going to be playing super long term. They are very good, I think they're certainly one of the better ones, but I don't get a lot of satisfaction out of playing them. Um, 
I, I, I always feel like a little bit of a dick when I'm playing them, so I'm not sure that the one I'm going to be sticking with, but certainly one that's been enjoyable for the video. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, do let me know what you think in the comments down below. Of course, subscribe to the channel for lots more Conquered Play content. Thanks for watching, guys, and I shall see you all on the next video.